Hey, how's it going? Welcome back to another episode of the Duo Group Iron Man. Last video, we set up a bunch of dailies on the account. We got the birdhouse run set up and going, the farm run set up and going, giant seaweed as well. We did a bunch of quests that were related to farming and some quests not related to farming too. But today is going to be the day that we are going to do monkey madness. I'm going to have to wait for Spook Dog to wake up first though because I sleep way less hours than her. It's not that she necessarily sleeps a lot, it's just that I, I don't sleep as much. I've always slept like six hours a night or something since high school. We're just going to get set up at the Ammonite Crabs because it's right here. Here, and I kind of want to just skip the rune scimitar, just go straight from Addy to Dragon. So we're going to need attack XP anyways to get to 60 attack. I'll just set myself up over here and I have to start editing the previous video now. Okay, that's enough AFKing for now. I got the video edited. We got a couple attack levels. We got a hit points level. Uh, if slash when we do come back here, I probably should buy a rune sword first because I'm pretty sure a rune sword is just straight up better than Addy Scimitar. But let's go do the birdhouse run, farm run, seaweed run, all that good stuff. Oh yeah, and as you can see, if I stayed there long enough, I would have eventually died because my hit points was slowly going down faster than it could regenerate. For Monkey Madness, we're going to want prayer pots, and we did get 38 herb lore last video, so we can make them. And I planted a couple ranar seeds, so we have plenty of ranars. Only thing we don't have in the bank right now is any snake grass, but there is a method involving Relica that will allow us to collect snake grass pretty easily, at least for our level. It, it's not really a big deal though because we really only need like one inventory of snake grass, but I just want to use this as an excuse to do the Fremnic Easy Diary, which is what we need for the method. We haven't really knocked out any of these easy tasks yet, but we're going to do them all now because we have all the requirements. Oh, while we're here doing these tasks, we need to buy this. So we have to buy two of these, one for me and one for Spook. This is the best outfit in the game. Final task for the Fremnic Easy Diary, chop and burn some oak logs and there we go we can claim the reward now uh, i'll put all the rewards up on screen but there's really not much but the reason why we did this was because pure the seer now works as a bank deposit box and then of course we get the xp lamp so it's going to be going out to herb lore 2.5k XP also got us to 43. Pair the Seer is right over here and you can see he has a deposit option. So if we deposit with him, we could just put all this stuff directly into the bank. The two things I could think of off the top of my head that this is good for is for collecting snape grass and for collecting sardines for the Tower of Life, which we can't do right now because I just stole from the stall for one of the diary tasks. But to get the snape grass, we can come right over here to Jarvald. He'll take us straight to Waterbirth Island. And then we just run around picking up the snape grass. Once we got our full inventory, teleport back to Relica or travel back to Relica with Jarvald. And then we could run back over to Pier the Seer and then deposit the inventory with him. She's almost at 43 prayer now. She's a blue dragons. And apparently she spent all her money on chaos runes on accident and doesn't have any air runes and doesn't have any money for air runes. So I'll give her a couple hundred K GP so she can buy some air runes and other stuff. I kind of started Olaf's quest while we were doing those diary tasks. So I think it's a good excuse and a sign that we should just go do it. I remember watching this layer music guide years ago, watching him try to get past this. And it's so funny. I think this is the maddest I've ever seen him trying to get past this walkway here. Cause every time you fail, you get teleported all the way out here. And you have to run back and dig to get into the dungeon and run through the whole entire place again. No. This is attempt number five. Please don't fall. Yes. Dude, I swear, like, there's so many maps in RuneScape that just look so wrong. Let's go ahead and buy the Rune Sword. It is 20k, which is actually a lot cheaper than I thought it would be. I was expecting, like, I don't know, 60 or 80k or something. And just ended up buying Rune Plate Legs, too, because even though there's 64k, it would be a huge upgrade over what we had before, which was just, like, the default group Iron Man Plate Legs, which were the same as Iron. So there we go, a couple of Bible upgrades. Okay, it's time for a fit check. Please don't roast the amulet, don't roast the gloves. I know I could buy, I think Addy gloves is what we have unlocked, but I kind of just want to save the money until we actually are able to buy Barrow's gloves and then just go all out spending money on the B gloves. But yeah, back to AFK for a little bit. I think that's enough Ammonite Crabs for now. Uh, we gained two more attack levels and two more hit points levels up to 54 attack. And I want to take a bit of a break to try mining sandstone. And it looks like the XP per hour we were getting for attack is like 2k more XP per hour than the Addy Scimitar using the Rune Sword this time. So it wasn't really too much of a difference. I don't even know if it was worth it. But either way, once we do upgrade to the Dragon Scimitar, we could just hand the Rune Sword over to Spook. Well, here's the setup. Uh, I have the Ring of Kuros on because it makes the carpet rides cost only 100 GP instead of 200 GP. Then I got the Desert Robes on. 
Uh, the reason why I want to mine the sand is because I want to get crafting up because you saw the amulet earlier. I'm using an amulet of accuracy. I assume Spook is probably using the same thing. So at the very least, it'd be nice to get level 50 so we could upgrade to amulets of strength. But even more importantly, we're going to need 61 crafting to do lunar diplomacy. So eventually 61 is going to be more of the goal. I was looking at the Anakra's Lament quest. We need 50 crafting just to do that quest. So I guess once we get 50 crafting, we may as well do the quest because then we could unlock the camulet, which is a pretty fast way to get here. It's a good thing we're getting up mining too because we need 60 mining as well for lunar diplomacy and the higher the mining level the more volcanic ash we get per mine which is also something that I need to start worrying about a bit because we are pretty low on ash. And then once we have a full inventory of sandstone we could run over here to sandstorm which is the grinder and then we now have 60 buckets of sand. We just deposit it in there and then we could buy the buckets of sand from him for 50 GP each although we actually have to give him the buckets which I haven't done yet. And then the amount of time that we can stay here for is pretty much determined by the amount of water skins and how fast we run out, which is why it'd be really nice to have Lunar Diplomacy done because then we could just use Humidify to just keep on filling them up and we would never have to leave this place. But unfortunately, we actually have to get 61 crafting to even do Lunar Diplomacy. Sorry, I know I was talking really fast. My mind was just moving like a million miles a second and I just didn't want to forget to mention anything. I just really like planning stuff out and talking about what I'm doing and why I'm doing it and how it fits into the bigger picture. And it kind of reminds me of being a kid too. I remember like being in school talking with my friends about what we're gonna go home and do that day on RuneScape. And it's not even just so that you know what I'm doing, but also kind of for me too, because when I say this stuff out loud, especially like repeat it over and over, it kind of like reinforces the idea of the things that I'm doing. and also helps me plan out more things to do going forward. I wanted to figure out how much sand I would need for 61 crafting. And there's this really cool plugin on Runelite called Skill Calculator. So I selected crafting and then you could shift click to select multiple actions. So we're going to select the action of making the molten glass and then the action of making the unpowered orbs. Uh, so with those two actions, uh, with the target level being 61, we would have to do 3.2k actions, which essentially means that I would need 3,200 bucks of sand to get to 61 crafting. Well, we have run out of water. It's been just under an hour. We got about 1250 bucks of sand, 18k mining XP, averaging 23k per hour. And this is doing it pretty casually. Uh, let's go buy some buckets now so we can buy some sand and then we'll get to 50 crafting and then do Anakra's Lament. Well, even the buckets themselves come out to like five to six GP each. With Drew, we are gonna deposit buckets, give him all of them, and now we can claim sand. Uh, 50 GP each. We'll buy 1k for now, so it's gonna be 50k GP. And now we're gonna head on over to the rogue's den. I think this is the last mime random that we're gonna have to do. This should be the last emote unlocked, the lean emote. We have the full mime outfit and all four of the mime emotes. We need soda ash and we could turn giant seaweed into soda ash. And this is something I've never done, but we can use giant seaweed on a fire. I think we get six per giant seaweed. Uh, let's see. Yeah, okay. We don't get any XP for doing this though. We get 24 soda ash and then we bank it, withdraw four more and repeat this process. We need one soda ash for every bucket of sand to make into molten glass. It's been about 30 minutes now and we've turned pretty much all the giant seaweed into soda ash. And if we search the bank, we now have almost 3.3K soda ash, which means this will be enough to get us to 61 crafting. We do still have to get all the buckets of sand though. We'll have to get like 2.2K more. All right, Spook got 43 prayers. So she has overheads and we're all ready to go do monkey madness too except i just want to make the prayer pots first um, but before making the prayer pots i want to try making amulets of chemistry hopefully we crush as few of these jades as possible because that's what we need to make them okay nice that's pretty good make them to jade amulets and if you don't know what an amulet of chemistry does it gives you a five percent chance so one out of 20 for those of you who might be a little bit mathematically challenged of giving you a four dose potion instead of a three dose potion when you're training herb lore. And as you can see, each of these have five charges. Because we have so few of these right now, it's probably best to only use them for the really important potions. Like in this case, the prayer pots, I would say are very important. Oh, look at all the ranners we have. Plus we have all these grimy ones too that we can clean, get even more herb lore XP. Oh, the first ever prayer pots made on the account. Oh, it's gonna feel so good to just be stocked up on these. Oh, see, it just procced right there. Helps you create a four dose potion and now it has four charges left. That reminds me, there is an option on the amulet so that when it runs out of charges and breaks, you can make it so that it stops automatically making the potion so that way you don't keep on making potions without having the chance to get that effect. Look at all the prayer pots we have for now. I'm gonna give her 10 prayer pots. Like we definitely don't need this many for the quest, but you know, just for the future. And then a uh, gold bar for the quest as well. Oh, I'm so excited to do monkey madness. All right, you ready for this? Couple of chads about to take on monkey madness. Oh crap. Did you bring 200k? I'm really bad at these. 
do, do you have money for me? Oh wait, yeah, because I gave you 200k before. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna need that money back. <laughs> no, I accidentally traveled with him. I was supposed to talk to him, so it just like automatically brought me back here. Uh, okay, don't forget to pray range here. I even start with full prayer. I forgot to restore it the monastery and rip hardcore status. Oh crap, wait, no, it's <laughs> <laughs> Sit down. Don't come in here. Don't come in here. Just walk away. Good, good. Good Harambe. Okay, go, 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 go. No. Oh, unlucky. Oh boy, I can't wait to come down here after Monkey Madness 2 once we uh, get our Zenites. Of course, I didn't bring the Chaos Runes with me. We need to kill one of these monkey zombies for the Awoji section of RFD. Oh, wait, we could attack them together. Because then, right, because we're group firemen. We're also attacking the higher level one. Probably should have gone for one of the lower level ones. I cannot count how many times I've had to staff bash things on this account. Well, I'll be a monkey's uncle. Can I just top worlds? <laughs> They're all just like stuck there. For Kip and Staff Bashing, name a more iconic duo. For Kip and Heckhoundor, there we go. Thank you for the chaos runes. It is still uh, really slow, but probably a bit faster than Staff Bashing at least. I'm also very thankful for uh, the Gorilla Statue Altar here. Okay, I think you just have to save spot them so that they don't heal. I'm guessing it's what it is, because when I was in melee distance, he would just heal himself when he got low health. Yes. Thanks, you can take your stuff back now. Oh, <laughs> what are your runes? <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, sorry. Y'all got a stam I can use? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Imagine playing a normal account in 2021. He said hold up. Oh crap, I forgot my dignity. You guys monkeying around? No, we're just horsing around. Back in the 90s I was in. And now I have all four for RFD. Okay, equip the sigil and we are ready to fight the final monster. Wait, what the heck? We can see, that's so weird. You can like see each other here. Oh, oh, okay. There's multiple teams. What the heck? That's so weird. Now we just sit around for like 10 or 15 minutes and let the gnomes do their work. Slowly doing one damage at a time. <laughs> it was so cute, just a bunch of like little ants hitting this big demon. Watching all these gnomes reminds me of the age old question, would you rather fight one 20 year old or 21 year olds? Okay, not gonna get Mr. Mammold here. Okay, <laughs> I kinda did. <laughs> it's fine, it's fine. We have to do the last hit. Um, otherwise, if I'm not the one that does the last hit, then it doesn't count. Jungle demon is down. Grats. Thank you. Congrats to you too. So there's a hidden monkey down here that we can see after we kill the jungle demon. Whoa. This place is so cool though. I never knew this existed. Did we enter the crack here? Oh yeah, he's in here. And apparently, even if you don't have the monkey speak amulet, you can still talk to him and he understands you when you understand him. Yeah, it was in my video. Wow, you make videos? Doesn't he teleport you to like a dangerous area though? I'm just gonna click yes. I'll be... I, uh, yes. <laughs> I'm gonna teleport out there right away, probably. Yeah, oh, freaking poison. Yay, monkey madness is done. Let's go, uh, get the XP reward. Okay, we're gonna focus on attack and defense, so that way we can get closer to 60 attack sooner, so that way we can equip the dragon scimitar a bit sooner. Let's see, starting from 54 attack, up to 56 attack. Strength level, hit points, defense, oh. So satisfying seeing all those XP drops. Well, thanks. Yeah, I hope that helps you get the the 53 cooking requirement for Hero's Quest. I got you. Only the best for you. I, I don't have any other uh, wow. any other food, uh, any any raw food, unfortunately. <laughs> well, with Monkey Madness out of the way, we could start crafting here at the Edgeville Furnace. Here we have our sand and soda ash, and I guess we'll just start uh, making these into molten glass until we get 50 crafting, at which point we can then go do Anakra's Lament. Oh yeah, by doing this, we actually get the buckets back too, which is pretty nice that you don't get that with super glass make. So then eventually we could just put those straight back into the sandstone grinder. Ooh, 49 crafting. That means we could do the hand and the sand quest. That's the only requirement that we still needed. And then from that quest, we get a 9k XP reward. So we'll get 9k XP to the level, which is like two more inventories. Then we'll do Hand in the Sand, which will get us level 50. And then level 50 is what we need for Nakra's Lament. However, there is still one item that we need for the Hand in the Sand quest, and that is White Berries. There are a couple other ways to get them. We can't farm them because we need 59 farming. So I think the fun way to go about it is by going to Lava Dragon Isle. 
Uh, I mean, we're not really going to be risking anything, but it'll be fun just to stop by there and see what's going on. Oh, wait, I need a slash weapon. Okay, let's see. How are we going to make it through here? Huh? Wait, what's that? Who? Who's this mysterious stranger just slashing the web for me? Wow, thank you. Thank you very much, kind sir. I appreciate that. Okay, Lava Dragon Isle. There's no one here except for William. Uh, okay, white berries. Where are the white berries at? There we go. A couple white berries. Definitely need at least two. One for me, one for Spook, of course. Oh, there's a person. Wait, oh, wait, don't don't kill me yet. Let me pick up the white berries. And okay, now you can kill me. Drop all this stuff. Wait, no, finish killing me. <laughs> what are you doing? You're supposed to kill me. Oh, the dragon kill me, okay. All right, we got our white berries. I'll put one of the white berries in here for Spook. Oh, she planted me some flowers. Oh yeah, she was asking before if there's any use for the mithril seeds. I told her there's like a niche use for uh, Chaos Ellie, but probably not worth keeping. So I guess she uh, got all these flowers for me. How sweet. Here we go, everything for Hand in the Sand. I always just remember this quest as being like a running simulator and maybe a teleporting simulator too. Can't wait. I'm glad we at least have the Watchtower teleport for this. Pickpocket Sandy for some sand. Sha sha sha. Pocket sand. Ooh, there's a random shooting star here. Let's get some more stardust. We can passively work towards those rewards. When I mined all the shooting stars on the UYM, I used the CC and each of these stars lasted for like five minutes. So I didn't think I'd be here for this long. I forgot that when there's not like a big clan of people, these last a long time and I end up being here for over 30 minutes. We got plus one mining level and plus 568 more stardust, putting us at... 1,052. We need 2k for the celestial ring. Anyways, back to hand in the sand. Wow, look at all the sand being restored. Still getting flashbacks every time I read in Trana. There is hand in the sand complete. There's a crafting reward putting us at 50 crafting. We can now make our ruby amulets for the amulets of strength. We can collect our daily sand from Bert. And then once we get 66 magic, we can now enter the wizard's guild and access the rune store. Although we could boost from 63 with the wizard's mind bomb. They added hand in the sand as a requirement because there are a lot of bots before, which there probably still are, but there were a lot of bots then too. Man, I feel pretty bad because I skipped so many birdhouse runs today doing monkey madness. Wait, I, I needed a bucket of water for the quest to make soft clay, but the desert heat evaporated it. Oh, remember I showed before how I got to the quarry? I like took the magic carpet there and then ran down here. I forgot they added the ruins of Anka, so I could just take that free boat from Al Karid and then just run straight there. It's probably a little bit faster doing it that way. And here is the end of Knocker's Lament. 7k XP and a bunch of skills, and then we get the Camulet, which has four charges to teleport us right here in the temple. With the Desert Hard Diary, you can have it teleport you outside the temple where the quarry is, so that'd be a really convenient teleport to have. And then you can also pay 1 million GP to change this to unlimited charges, which we will do someday once money isn't an issue anymore. In order to recharge the Camulet, we need a Donkey Camel Dung, which uh, it gives it four charges for each bucket that you have. So we got our uh, Ali's Red Hot Sauce from Ali the Kebab Seller over here. And then we can take it over to the camels. We'll fill up their trough with the hot sauce. And then very shortly after some dung will appear and we could pick it up and put it in the bucket. Does it do it automatically? Now we have to do it one at a time. And just like that, we are set probably forever until we could afford the upgrade for one mil. Is this tradable? It's probably not. No, it's not. Oh, and by the way, the cap of charges on the Camulet is four. You can't just like keep on adding more and more buckets of dung to increase that. We finished Monkey Madness today, so it's only right that we go ahead and buy the Dragon Scimitar for 100k GP, which kind of hurts. But the Dragon Scimitar is going to be such a huge upgrade over the Rune Sword. Even if we had a Rune Scimitar, it'd still be such a huge upgrade over that. And we're going to Hop World as well, so we could buy a second one for Spook. And there is another 100k GP spent, but we got our matching Dragon Scimitars which neither of us can equip yet because we don't have 60 attack and we'll toss one of these into the group storage and then we're gonna go to Amnite Crabs now because we need to get 60 attack before the end of the video. We can't do Monkey Madness and then just not equip the Dragon Scimitar in the same video. Okay, I came over here to Edgeville to make a very, very important upgrade that I've been waiting to make for a while. So let's add the balls of wool here and then we can enchant the ruby amulets to make our amulets of strength. Oh yes. There's gonna be so many more amulets we're gonna be upgrading to in the future. Eventually the amulet of power, then the amulet of glory, and then the fury, and then the zenite necklaces. And uh, here's the stats of the amulet of strength. So it gives a uh, straight up plus 10 melee strength bonus. And of course the other one is going into the storage. We'll put this into the gear tab and say goodbye to the amulet of accuracy. 
Oh, so nice. Oh, there's a lucky impling, but we can't catch lucky implings. Well, let's bring the main over here and we'll see what we possibly could have gotten. Wow, okay. This is a very specific chain of events, but I started thinking about Desert Treasure, and then I realized the only thing that I still need for it is Temple of Ikov, and then I started thinking the only thing I need for Temple of Ikov is the Longbow, which we can get for medium clues, and then I checked all the clues I had in the bank, and these have been sitting in the bank since like pretty much the start of the account, so decided to try them out, and we got this uh, clue step to come to Zaya here, and that remind me, we need to unlock the Fairy Ring, uh, which we have to pay for 80k GP, but we're gonna be using this fairy ring a lot, of course. Man, I've been spending so much GP today, but it's worth it, I think. Maybe it's not worth it to unlock it right now. Maybe I should have waited. Either way, we have this fairy ring unlocked. Yes, we got the medium casket done. Okay, we haven't opened any clues at all on the account. I was meant to just go to Amnite Crabs, but I kind of got distracted. I've just been putting it off, so. Um, here's the beginner. Okay, easy. <laughs> all right. I mean, I guess we'll just hold on to that in the bank for a while. And then the main thing I want to get from mediums is a U longbow, which on average will take like nine or 10 medium clues to get. All right. Oh, I'm with the power though. That's so good. Oh, it's so good. The freaking upgrade. Oh, dude. Remember before I just said like, oh yeah, we'll be making more and more amulet upgrades. And there we go. <laughs> Um, fire Val Staff as well, technically an upgrade over the Staff of Fire that we've had. This is only a plus 6 strength bonus, so in some situations, actually, the Amulet of Strength would be better. I think the Amulet of Strength actually would be better for Amulet Crabs because of that. Um, Amulet Crabs have no defense, so I don't know if accuracy really matters, but it's still really, really good to get, of course. Alright, 56 attack. You already know the goal is going to be 60 for that sweet, sweet Dragon Scimitar. I have it in my inventory for the motivation, so I know exactly what we're working on, and uh, let's get this going. I should probably hop to a different world, because I like standing in that spot. I only need two Amulet Crabs, um, because I can't kill them fast enough. I just came back to my computer after being gone for, like, what is that, like 10 minutes or something? And I just realized my auto retaliate was off the whole time. <laughs> Let me uh, reset that attack XP count here. <laughs> oh boy, here we go. Any second now, one more hit. <gasps> Level 60 attack. Oh, yes. We can equip dragon stuff now, of course, including the dragon scimitar. Let's go over here. All right, ready? Here we go. Oh. Before we end the video though, we have three caskets to open. Here's one, two. <laughs> oh, that's actually good. Okay, we got one easy clue to open. Okay, zero to one page three. All right, that's our first ever unique from clues. I don't think Spook's opened any yet. So first ever clue unique on the group accounts. Oh man, today was just a really fun day. I feel like we had a bunch of adventures. I mean, I guess we do every day. I don't know, every day playing RuneScape's a fun day. And then taking a look at the duo group Iron Man high scores, this is the best rank we've been yet. Granted, it is after a long day of playing and we're about to go to bed and then we'll probably lose a few ranks overnight. But even so, I mean, rank 49, that is on the third page because it's 20 per page. But uh, yeah, this is the point where we're gonna wrap up. We have 177 quest points. There's the time played and other miscellaneous stuff. And then here's the stats. And if you haven't already, make sure you check out my duo teammate Spook Dog's YouTube channel linked in every video description. And with that said, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope that you have a great day and I will see you again tomorrow. That's a car.